Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at synovial joints. The first thing you need to remember is that there's three major joint types in the body. There's fibrous joints, which don't really have much movement. There's cartilaginous joints, which have a little bit of movement. And there's synovial joints, which are freely movable. So the focus of this lecture is gonna be those synovial joints. If we were to take a stereotypical or general synovial joint, which I've drawn up here, and there's a couple of things you need to be aware of that all these joints have. First thing is, when you've got one bone articulating or speaking to another bone, like we've got here, there's going to be cartilage lining the surface of those bones. This cartilage is called articulating cartilage, which basically means communication cartilage. And the type of cartilage that's present is hyaline cartilage. It's there because it reduces the friction at the site where that first bone talks to the second bone. The other thing that you're gonna find is that all synovial joints will have a synovial capsule, also known as an articular capsule. Now that contains two particular things that you need to be aware of. One is that there's a fibrous layer, which we can see here. This is dense connective tissue, really important because it holds that joint nice and tight. Second thing is there's a synovial membrane. This is on the inside of that joint and it has simple squamous epithelia. Now squamous, remember squished epithelia, it produces a fluid and this fluid is called synovial fluid. So you've got synovial fluid in the joint capsule itself and what the synovial fluid does is one, creates this frictionless environment similar to what these articulating cartilage surfaces are doing on the bone. Two, it provides cushioning so that when there's some sort of impact at the bone, it helps reduce that force. And three, it helps deliver nutrients and takes nutrients, or I should say wastes, away from the site. That's what the synovial fluid does in the joint capsule. So as you can see, that's a generalized view of a synovial joint. So one, they're freely movable. Two, they have articulating surfaces with articulating cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage. Three, they have a capsule which has a fibrous layer and a synovial membrane that produces synovial fluid. Now, there's six different types of synovial joints that you need to be aware of. And they can be basically categorized as being uniaxial, meaning it only moves in one plane, biaxial moves in two planes, and multiaxial moves in more than two planes. So I'll talk about this in more detail in a second, but let's go through how we can remember the six different types of synovial joints. So luckily, I've created a mnemonic for you. And this mnemonic is Prince Harry pulled Charles's Saddlebag. Now you can interpret that any way you like. It doesn't matter, it's a mnemonic. It just helps us remember something. Prince Harry pulled Charles's saddlebag. All right, remember what a mnemonic is, is you can take the first letter of each of these words and that's gonna tell you the first letter of each of the words we need to remember. So the six synovial joints. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what are the six synovial joints? Well, they're gonna be, P is gonna be planar. It's a planar joint, that's the first one. H is gonna be hinge, it's a hinge joint. P is gonna be a pivot joint. C is gonna be a condylar joint. S for saddle is actually gonna be saddle. That makes it easier to remember, saddle joint. And B is a ball and socket joint. So there's six different types of joints. Planar, hinge, pivot, condyla, saddle, ball and socket. And the great thing is, it goes from being uniaxial, biaxial, multiaxial. So let's actually highlight those. The first three here are uniaxial. Only moves in one plane. Condyla and saddle, biaxial. Moves in two planes. And ball and socket, multiaxial. Moves in many planes. All right, now let's draw them up, have a look at the different types. So first we're gonna look at is gonna be a planar joint. Now, 
An example of a planar joint first is that if we take the hand, take the bones of the hand and you have a look at all the bones of what we've got, the carpals here, and you take the quatratrum and the hamate. Now, these two bones, their articulating surface is going to be that of a planar joint. And what does it look like? Because that doesn't really show it too well. It looks like this. You have one flat surface and another flat surface. And again, it only moves in one plane. And this is going to be a planar joint. So it's like a gliding joint is another way of explaining it. So the quatratrum and the hamate. Let's move on to the hinge joint. Hinge is simple, it's like a door. How a door opens and closes, and I'm doing that with my arm, funnily enough, because my elbow joint is a hinge joint. So let's take a look. I've drawn the humerus, the radius, the ulna, and here's the elbow joint. And again, unsurprisingly, you've got the articulating cartilage here. I haven't joined up the synovial joint aspect, or capsule, because it just makes it a bit more difficult. But this is a hinge joint. And so if I were to join, draw a hinge joint up, a hinge joint is going to be like the hinge of a door and it only moves in one axis. Hinge joint, perfect. Next one we need to look at is going to be a pivot joint. Now a pivot joint, and the example of it here is the first and second cervical vertebrae, which is C1 and C2, I'll talk about that in a sec. It's where you've got a rounded bone and that rounded bone sits within a circular bone or ligament. In this case, for C1, C2, it's a ligament and it can only move in one axis. It spins, turns around. So what happens in this case is C2, your second cervical vertebrae known as the axis, has a protrusion called the dens and it sits underneath C1, which is known as the atlas, and that dens moves up and through and you've got this ligament here. And what it allows is for the head to turn. So axis, which is another name for C2, means turning, spinning, right? Because that's what that one does. Atlas doesn't. And Atlas is named after that god that's holding the world above its head meaning the head, the skull, right? So that's the atlas. So that's an example of a pivot joint. Now what we've drawn up are all the uniaxial joints, right? We've got the, uh, the um, he, uh, sorry, the planar joint at the triquitrum and the hamate, and it just glides. We've got the hinge joint at the elbow, and it just swings open and closed like a door. We've got the pivot joint at C1 and C2, and it just turns around. These are all the uniaxial. Let's move on to the biaxial. Biaxial, first of which is going to be the condylar joint. Now the condylar joint, the example is at the metacarpal and the proximal phalanx from two to five, all right? Two to five. So the way that this condylar joint works is similar to a ball and socket, similar-ish, but definitely not as deep as a ball and socket. And we haven't done ball and socket yet. And again, it moves only in two axes. So if it was one axis, or axis, it would be like this, but it's two. Okay, so it's two different planes in which it can move. And again, the example is the metacarpal and the proximal phalanx. That's the condylar joint. Then we move off to the saddle joint. Now the saddle joint is like sitting on a saddle, right? An example of a saddle joint is the trapezium and the first metacarpal. And a saddle joint, if I can draw it up, it's actually quite difficult to draw. That's a saddle joint. We've got those two surfaces and they can move in two different axes. Saddle joint. Again, trapezium, first metacarpal. Now we move on to the last of the synovial joints, a multiaxial joint. That's going to be a ball and socket joint, that of the hip, where the femur articulates in to that hip joint. And we know that this is a great example. It's a nice deep joint. And because it's a deep joint, You've got that room for movement, and it's a pretty strong joint as well, but it moves in not just two planes, but it moves in 
many planes. And this is going to be a multi-axial joint, that where the femur articulates in at the hip itself. So let's just quickly label to finish off, right? So we've got the planar joint at the, at the triquetrum and the hamate. We've got the hinge joint at the elbow. We've got the pivot joint. We've got the pivot joint up here at C1, C2. We've got the condylar joint, which is going to be at the metacarpal and proximal phalanx. We've got the saddle joint, which is going to be at the first metacarpal and the trapezium. And we've got the ball and socket joint at the hip. Ball and socket. And these are the six different types of synovial joints that you need to remember.